Hi, this uh, video today is going to cover some really super important aspects of the Windworks course, questions that people have raised, and, and thank you to uh, one of our wonderful friends and uh, subscribers here, Bill, um, who is a professional player from Texas. He raises some really important uh questions and points about Windworks and his progress. He's been wonderful enough to share his progress with us and has questions to ask, many of which I've been planning to uh, address. Uh, I'm doing a bunch of new drills for the Largo stage. In fact, I'm going to be changing the Largo stage because from my golfing uh, uh, experiment, as you may, uh, you may or may not have heard about, but I taught myself to play left-handed and decided as a litmus test to sign up to a tournament uh, to which standing there hitting a ball left-handed was ridiculous and exciting and fun and I ended up winning one of the days which was ridiculous uh, and the roller coaster ride of that whole adventure is very important for my learning of, of uh, how to be the student again and how to teach and hopefully give more effective advice to uh, those of you, no matter what standard, whether you're a professional player wanting to make changes or whether you are um, beginning, the way that we think about it, um, I'm emphasising a lot of very important points that are going to be going into the Largo status stage. Um, big changes coming, uh, some great stuff. So stand by. Bill sent us a video. I'm going to work through it. A lot of you will relate to uh, what he's talking about and if you haven't checked out Windworks yet now's the time let's go the visual check with the visualizer which I might have been down. get my mirror because I'm I know Greg says eyes closed quite a bit I I like having the visual so on this point it's fantastic uh, I've been using for the last 12 months or more the, the line eyes closed, eyes open for learning, eyes closed for storing. Eyes open for learning, eyes closed for storing. Now, one of the major points that I'm going to be putting in the new Largo status videos are the importance of a mirror for awareness. There's a term that I'm going to use a lot called, I've got a big thunderstorm outside, so hopefully we don't get affected. This is the second time I've done this video. The first time it went for an hour and a quarter and the audio wasn't working. I'll fix that up. But there's lightning and thunder, very frightening outside, <laughs> and uh, hopefully we don't get affected. Anyway, uh, mirror, phone. There is a term the illusion of competence. Now, when I was developing my left-handed golf swing, you film yourself, you watch back. I was convinced that I was doing particular things correctly, and then when you watch back, you realize that you're not. And the illusion of competence is everywhere. So, And from my experience of teaching students over the last 12 months that have gone through the Windworks course, they think they're doing particular things correctly, and they're just not. And so this might uh, pertain to you being a Windworks member and you think you're doing some of the processes correctly and you're just not. You need to have a mirror. Well, you may be, but you may not be. Get a visualizer. You need to have a visualizer from here or from anywhere. Get yourself a visualizer. Telephone, iPad, record yourself. Not using recording equipment this year to watch what you're doing is akin to madness because you really learn a lot and I'm not saying copy looking at someone because they puff their cheeks out or they do this or they do that it's about what you're doing and are you being efficient from process to process step to step element to element um, so yes Bill eyes closed definitely uh, but eyes open for learning eyes closed for storing I need to, I want to see the black as Greg says in the mirror when I do the mau we place it over there screen mau so on this I'm going to be emphasizing in the new lessons firstly that shape is a pedal tone 
It's a low note on a trombone. It's a pedal tone on a, on a trumpet. But what we're developing here is awareness of the aperture corners. I need to reprint this piece of paper. It's seen a lot of action. The aperture corners. The corners of the aperture. Not the corners of the mouth, but the corners of the aperture. Where the air comes out. Okay, we need to develop that to get rid of the <coughs> pinch. The pinch in the middle of the lip. So we go, ow. Uh, with our fingers to show that the aperture, the facial muscles can move horizontally inwards without pinching the lips down, as, which is what we instinctively want to do or we're being trained to do by buzzing the lips and buzzing the mouthpiece too tightly uh, and tightening the oscillator up where we don't want to do that. We want to let it go. So the lips, another one of the many mantras, the lips can interact with the air as if they're the vocal cords. People don't believe me. I'm going to refer to it a lot. It's no harder than talking. And I'll say it until the day I can no longer talk. Um, let's move on. Sorry, I just need to say. Aperture corners. No pinch. The airflow. Body resonance. Horizontal movement of the facial muscles without the jaw closing. It's an awareness thing. We're developing a feeling, a sensation. And I'm going to say it over and over and over until people understand. We're developing a feeling of freedom and a sensation of what we want to carry into our regular playing. I don't expect anyone to be able to just play like this straight away. When you've got the feeling and the understand the understanding the belief system i know how it works i know what i need to do i know how to do it then we've got our point of difference when you recognize that which is nice and easy then you pick up the instrument uh and we refer to this later in the video uh when you don't feel like that when you're playing this is what we're looking for the point of difference Finally figured out how to keep the mouthpiece or visualizer on the lips and breathe and keep the uh, aperture open. Water. I promise. So, Water. That. so that Briefly. didn't mean to interrupt from you there, Bill. Um, I'm drinking water. <laughs> uh, it's a big thing. Mouthpiece placement and breathing. People reset. Mouthpiece moves around. Simply lower the jaw. <sighs> And we want to see the black. <laughs> Pedal tone. And, uh, then do the same thing on the mouthpiece with it. We've missed an opportunity here. Going straight onto the mouthpiece, you need to do the tissue. <laughs> Notice each time you can see my lips. <laughs> And that's a mere movement of the tongue, which I can demonstrate. It's just a mere movement of the fingers. Here's our battery. The balloon is our air, our fuel, our battery. And the sound eats up the energy. I don't want is another term that's not in the course yet, but what we're doing is eliminating any involuntary muscular activity. I don't want muscles that don't need to be engaged using this energy that should be being used by the by the uh, sound. I don't want to waste any energy. I want the sound to be consuming the energy, not unnecessary muscles. And then by... That's merely a movement of the tongue. There's no squeezing of the balloon. There's no kick from the abdominals. It's merely a release like the fingers. And it's also a way of checking the alignment of the air. So when you place, uh, what happens, and I did it myself for ages, is when you place the mouthpiece, you need to be very sure that you're placing the mouthpiece in exactly the same spot 
as the visualizer for 18 months. I was not doing that. This is going way back when. And when I wasn't getting the results that I realized that I should be getting, I knew I should be getting, I went, what's going on? And this is before I was doing tissue. Tissue is a later edition, later in, you know, five years ago or whatever. Maybe 10. This is going back 20 years. Put the mouthpiece on. And it turns out I was changing the position and accommodating the mouthpiece in the way that I'd been accustomed to. And as soon as I let go of that and went, my brain is gone. Firstly, my first reaction is there's no way you can play a note like that. But then the message was, yes, you can, because theoretically and scientifically, see all these books over my shoulder here, say that you can. So my understanding, my belief system was, yes, this works. And a note explodes out. You put the instrument down, you go put the kettle on, you have a coffee and you think about it. Immerse yourself in the in the in what just happened. Experience it. Don't try and do it again and mess yourself up. Just go, right, I knew it should work. And there's proof that it does. Coffee moment. Let's see. But I still have the to... The mirror because I'm still at a point where sometimes the mouthpiece placement, and I've been doing this pretty regularly for at least two months, where sometimes I'm not consistent on where I put it. Two months is a great start, but I've, I, I cannot stress the amount of repetitions that are required, and it's another thing going into these new videos. The amount of repetitions required, now I'm teaching someone with focal dystonia, a few people now, but one in particular, and she was at a, an online seminar last week, and they're going 200,000 repeats of something. This is from a neurological but focal, focal dystonia doctor in Germany, I think he is. Uh, 200,000 repeats of something <laughs> before the wiring starts to take place. The wiring, here's my new little toy, the flip switch. When does something wire? When does it happen automatically without thinking about it? This is what we're working on. So a couple of months is a great start. But to make what what this doctor said was, yes, neuroplasticity, the brain is plastic. It can change, but it doesn't want to. <laughs> so in order to get it to do something new takes a lot of repetition. And I can tell you 100%, every one of you watching this, I've done more repeats with my golf swing on the balcony, at the driving range, on the golf course, more repetitions and filming all of them and watching back and analysing it in the last six months than you've done this stuff on your instruments. I can guarantee it. And if you want to make changes, you've got to immerse yourself in it and the body will learn. And I've still got a long way to go, but I can feel the changes slowly happening. It feels very natural. Other times, not so much still. So I'm still adjusting, I think. Yeah, it's looking good though. And again, that setup is pedal tone, very low. It's a great process, perfect process. I've given so many lessons to people that are not doing this correctly. That is correct process. So I've got to do that a couple of times. I feel like I'm, I always go to the lean pipe because I want to have no expectations as Greg says of sound quality or even pitch um, when I do do get the sympathetic vibration on the lead pipe it's always a low pitch which I'm not concerned about at least I'm getting a vibration where I struggled for a long time not getting one at all <laughs> So that's fantastic. You moved around. You did the wah, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, there's videos at the course about this. Um, but then what I would love to have seen is... Uh, 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 uh. 
you can see there's that spot about half an inch out where the note starts to speak. So that's how to really develop the uh, the sympathetic oscillation of the lip. But what you're doing there is great, by the way. So if I remember rightly to when I did this, <laughs> my first take of this video. So it's about a low F sharp on the horn that you're um, you're doing there. I actually thought it was an F before, but it's about the F sharp. Beautiful. Perfect. Um, which brings me to my first question. I can always noodle around on this a little bit, and then I try to see how high I can go. And I get pretty discouraged when I realize that my range is pretty limited with this set. Okay, so <laughs> this is very important. It's very important. The expectation than the discouraged. What are, our, what are our expectations? Now, you won't be able to jump up an octave all of a sudden, or maybe you will. But to have that expectation will ultimately lead to disappointment versus, oh, observation. I wonder what's going to happen. So, I'll get you to recognise. <laughs> So there's that harmonic click. You can override that harmonic click and do chromatics and you can get higher by being connected when you recognise the shape and the body doesn't get involved. Now, you check out what happens coming up here. I wonder how will I ever get that to expand? Um, because if I go to my normal set, which is an M lip setting with the lips more closed, automatically a higher pitch naturally wants to come out. Yep. And I can go... So you see what's going on there? Okay, and I start talking to you, and everything's tightened up. Yes, the aperture corners have changed in the middle, hence the higher pitch. You've also grabbed the middle of the lip, as you alluded to. So you will be able to work on the aperture corners without pinching the middle of the lips. Remember, I'm going to say it again. We're developing a feeling of freedom, a sensation of openness that is to be carried into your regular playing. So I can pick up my horn here. I'm not playing at all these days. No gigs, only teaching, no practice, doing golf. And I start talking to you versus if we want to do what where we've paused right now. Then I start talking to you. Everything is grabbed. So we're working on the feeling of openness and the freedom, body resonance, flow, no pinch. And then we've got our point of difference. If we start and pinch down, you're going to feel the difference. And we're going to talk about this further. But you will feel the difference in the, the process of what you're doing there versus, I think you said something about the milk spout at the start. Forward towards the top lip. Aperture corners without pinching down, tongue position, body resonance and freedom. So I assume this will be explained later on in the upper levels of the course. I'm still on a Dante as I'll show you in a bit. OK, 
Okay, so the body wants to push then when that upper harmonic, because you've got to the the next resonance on the pipe, but you don't know the shape of it yet. So what the body wants to do is push to get the note to speak, but that's not it. As I demonstrated, you can go. But I don't want to talk about that. I want, don't want to get into the defying the harmonics on the pipe here now. But it can be done when you know the shape. I feel like the aperture is getting so small at that point that I would have to really dig down and worse, and I don't want to do that. So no, good. I'm not sure uh, what's happening at this point. Feedback is absolutely welcome. There. So you've got to the highest part of that lower frequency on the pipe. Then there's that harmonic gap. I don't want to talk about <laughs> how to override that. That's in book two, which you get for free in the ultimate level forever, the ebook. And there's a lot about the um, uh, overriding harmonics in that. Uh, all I'm going to say is the body wants to engage to find the higher notes. We don't want to be doing that. And then first time I said the singing C addresses that, then it turns out, as you're about to find out, that, Bill, thank you, man, thank you for doing this. You're going through the singing C exercises, and you're doing them beautifully, by the way. Please. Not a great sound. But... Sound, again, you know better than to worry about the sound. I think you're about to say something about that. It's about the process behind it. And you, I can sit here and talk to you like this, okay? But we don't want to be doing that. So, yeah, how are you doing? Or, oh, ouch. There's a big difference, okay? What I haven't seen, and I said it on the previous take of this video i'm not seeing any humming i'm not seeing any checking in and i'm not seeing any eyes closed now the eyes closed is the way of finding any involuntary muscular activation that we're trying to eliminate i don't want muscles activating unless they have to for the demand of the music but doing what we're doing here it's purely a shape change and have a listen to my voice and if we're looking deeply within the system you'll know whether we start to engage and the abdominals are coming up and the valsalve maneuver starts kicking in throat tightening up or that doesn't happen and we stay nice and open and there's a bit of that happening uh in what you just did there and that's fine i know this is going to take time and my goal is to eventually transit transition from my see so you'll be able to instantly feel the difference between these two approaches assuming that's the goal i want to have yes um i don't know what really else to do and greg says it's a great place to start that's correct what i'm trusting and building all this sort of on correct around. yes so after i keep looking this way because this is where my screen is where i can see myself i'm <laughs> sorry and after probably a good month or six weeks doing largo exercises, I feel like that was ready to go to the Andante level, the six exercises, which I've printed out. And actually, by at this point, after doing them for about four weeks, I have them memorized and sequenced, but just to make sure I don't mess that up. Um, which brings another question. How do you know you're ready to move on? I feel like I'm perhaps ready to move on to the moderato section. I don't want to rush things at all, and I'm perfectly happy working these for as long as it takes. Okay, so super valid question, and I get asked it quite a bit. And the answer is you can move on whenever you want. But remember the concept of what can I do, what can I kind of do, what can't I do? Once we've found our limit of what we can do, draw a line through and go go all the way to ultimate. 
check it out, have a look, see what's going on. But just be aware that there's uh, inefficiencies going to creep into the system. But that's okay because that's the point of difference, all right? Every time you do one of these correct processes, it's feeding Bill 2.0, Greg 2.0, Greg 1.0. So build 2.0 wants to be more efficient, more open. I'm seeing lightning flashes and thunder. I hope we don't get cut off. Uh, it's all about efficiency and awareness. So I still want you playing your, your existing way. You need to. You're gigging professional musicians. So keep doing that, unless you're beginners or you know intermediate players that don't play in any bands and you're just learning. Uh, but then we're developing the sensations and the understanding of what we want. That's the first thing. Implementation comes over time. So you can't afford to be just doing pure process because then when you go to pick up the horn when you've got a gig, you will not have played and you'll be in trouble. So get to as far as you can in the course and then... Keep going, step forward, but know that you've gone from process driven to results driven. I want to get the result. Now, the process isn't going to be as pure, but that's okay because you understand that you're working on it. I used to do gigs knowing I was killing myself, patting that reptile on the, on the head, going, it's okay, I'm working on it. I, you can't expect to just do it all straight away. I know you don't. I know you, you're doing it beautifully, Bill, so don't take me the wrong way. But it takes time, and it takes more time and repetition than people think. So having the, the last sort of six months especially, but the last 12 months to collect data on the way people are doing the course and questions they're having about it has enabled me now, combined with my left-handed golf, to really be able to look at the entire learning process and go, bang, 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 here we are. Bill, your processes are great. But you've got to keep going back to... Mao, the feeling of the singing, eyes closed, searching what the body is doing, then comparing it to what's happening when you're playing, okay? And then when you feel like you've got to where your limit is in windworks, with pure process, then go, okay, I'm done there, but let's see what happens when I take it to the next level and next level and become aware of any issues in your playing. Critical awareness of a problem is half the solution recognizing it, then being armed with the information to overcome the problems, you're halfway there. Then it's purely a process of elimination. Uh, so you can move forward at any time as long as your, your awareness of where you're at and what you're working on is very, very laid out. You know exactly what you're doing. So is it the sound quality? Is it the ease? Yes, and yes. It, you know, Greg several times says, uh, if the notes don't speak, don't worry about it. They will on time. You wait until everything speaks perfectly and you feel like you're in absolute control. When do you move on? That's my question. Yeah, you don't wait for the notes to speak. You come back tomorrow and see if they speak and you come back the next day and see if they speak with pure process. But in the meantime... You've gone through and you've looked at other things. And, and I don't want you pinching and choking and killing yourself. But I certainly want you knowing both sides of the fence. Efficiency paddock, inefficiency paddock, but better results. Greener pastures, you know. But, you know, the price you pay to get those results. And over time, the the results will be combined with the process, pure process and it'll all come together. So let's start. I'll of course do just a couple starting tones. So again, that shape in the mouth is not the low C. So then you'll see the mouth change shape. Let me demonstrate. Ah, oh, pedal tone. I think it's about an F sharp actually. If I go to it's very 
very important. One of the drills I'm going to be hammering in these new videos. First one's this. Actually, well, the first one's this. Opening up the concert hall and recognizing the feeling. Then, feeling the energy on your hand, feeling it. Passive energy. The next one is this. Because what our AU has done is created our awareness of the aperture corner. So even when the aperture gets smaller, the principles remain. Corners, no pinch, maintaining body resonance. So you could hear the notes started on. That was where the shape got up into the low C. It's a beautiful sounding C bill. And I remember back to when you were starting it, you were really having a battle with the whole concept. Uh, it's come a long way and it sounds terrific. I want more body resonance. I, I think there's still a little tiny bit of grab there. Just a little bit. So 1% rule. Can we let go of something somewhere else to get more openness? I usually do each step twice. And uh, then move on to the next, next step. Twice is good. Feel free to do it more than twice. Uh, to check in. I would stay on the E first. Uh, take some time on the E and then go EA just to have more data. You'll notice at the end of the C, it got a little bit softer, preparing to start tonguing the E. It's got to feel like a long tone. Feel the balloon. I had this. So it tapered off a little bit, which means a back off of the air. The body was predetermining that we're about to play other notes. It's a little thing, but you'll see on the exercise, no gaps. The low C energy is fueling the whole exercise. Right. So, yeah, there's just a tiny grab in the C uh, when you're going from below the note to the C. Uh, nothing major, but it's there, tiny. I'm going to keep saying it. This is the Singing C series as a psychology exercise. Okay. We are wired to engage the body when the idea of playing higher is introduced. Okay. This is overriding that. The whole psychology of blow faster to play higher is simply wrong, and I'll talk more about that as we go through. You don't blow faster from the body to play higher. The problem that people have is engaging the body too much and not knowing the shape of the notes. So we're learning the shape of the pitch. Now, yes, of course, we want it to sound good, and the sound will come, right? But there's enough energy in that low C to play the E and the A very easily. 
Okay, so you will find the shape. That's why I go up semitone by semitone and harmonic by harmonic just to get used to doing it. You're on the lookout. Eyes closed. Is there anything engaging in the body that doesn't need to be engaged? It's purely a shape change. Fluff notes don't matter. Good. When you apply more air, obviously the sound improves uh, for step two. So there's a little bit of this going on, just a little bit in the concert hall. And again, I would love to see you checking in, humming. Mm, now, as we're getting louder, the sound is consuming more of the energy. The aperture's getting wider, so the body has to provide that more of an energy. So from the abdominal muscles, pushing the diaphragm up, increasing the lung pressure to feed the sound. But we don't want to cross that line to where the body starts chewing the energy up. Muscles becoming involved. When we start doing that a little bit, all of a sudden there's a degree of El Salva. And I'm not saying, Bill, that you're doing it, but just putting it out there. Versus. I start talking to you and there's nothing grabbing because the aperture is allowing more energy out and the sound is eating that energy but there's no whilst there is greater support from the abdominals to keep that air energy moving it's not negative energy it's just giving the the providing the energy required to create that sound And I will say, however, this is a beautiful sound and you've come a long way with it. It's really fantastic. Yeah, so don't be misled as to thinking that that's the shape of the notes that you're playing. It, it isn't. But you're creating that shape after you're playing and keeping the freedom, which is terrific, right? But the sound suggests that you're not inhibiting the oscillation of the lip and the concert hall's not closing up. There's a little grab, but nothing of concern. It's a beautiful trumpet sound. But keep working the 1% rule. Can I let go of something anywhere to get more sound? You're addressing a lot of issues here. Firstly, you know the answer to the first part of that. Closed eyes, humming, checking into the concert hall, other doors still open, okay? Then the range thing is a shape thing. Again, I won't breathe in. Okay? Range comes from here, not from here. That's something I have to reconcile. Step three. I can guarantee if at this point right now you were to close your eyes, mm, you'll feel a, t uh, feel a slight closing. 
And also, the E wasn't as loud as the C. So feel free to support a little more. Open up. I heard this. <laughs> Forward movement. <laughs> Open. Support the, the volume. It's just a little softer. Yeah, so there are a couple of things going on. They're minor. I want you to consider this. Once we get to the A, nothing in the body changes. There is You've put your foot on the throttle a bit because it's louder, but then when you're changing shape, I'm just seeing my mic peak. I hope it's not peaking when I'm playing. I'm sorry if it is. Maybe, I, oh, should I turn that down a bit? Oh, crikey. Let's turn this back down to there. I'm using OBS to put my screen and then the um, the web page. It's very cool technology, but hopefully my audio is not too bad. At least it's on this time. Okay, so there is a little bit grabbing, 1%. Let's use the 1% rule, see if we can open that up. Yeah, it's not quite passive uh, on the eighth notes. It's close, but you can see a little drop after you finish playing. It's a bit active where I want. Then you notice there's nothing going on. I want it to be completely passive when you are doing the eighth notes. And those are not so difficult at that point. It also shows the concept of blowing faster to play higher is ludicrous. And this is my favorite exercise all the way through to ultimate when we're doing eighth note triplets and sixteenths and super fast. You're getting faster and we do them higher, louder and softer. Shape change is changing the pitch. We're pulling the air back. And what are we working on here, folks? <laughs> so remember, we're making the oscillator respond on less air pressure than it's been accustomed to. We're taking away the musculature approach to playing, and all of a sudden, we're pulling back the airflow. We're staying passive on these eighth notes. So the oscillator is having less air to thrive on, to survive on. All right? This is hashtag efficiency, right? That's the overall purpose of what we're working on here. Step one for me. That's very interesting. Normally, the step one is easier and the harmonic slurs are more difficult, but each to their own. Great. <laughs> Yeah, there's just a little let go when you finish playing. It's beyond passive. So let's see if we can pull back even more. Really, eyes closed. Look deep at the process. Minimal movement. There is movement. We don't want to be setting the illusion that there's no movement. There has to be movement, but it's optimal, the minimal amount of movement that we can get. Step 
You'll notice again there's a decrescendo. I'll jump back before you go into the E. There is a pullback in the volume ever so slightly. So the, the brain is predetermining going to the E and the A. You can hear it taper off. Mate, that's fantastic. Beautiful, love it. Sounds good, feels good, should feel free, should feel open. How does it compare? How does the feeling compare to your old way of playing? There's the question. Point of difference. It's tapering again. Beautiful. All of it, yeah. Your step six. So I'm not convinced that it's entirely passive. I'm happy to be wrong. Happy to be wrong. Just flagging that maybe there's a little bit of activity going on. And because there's been no eyes closed, no body's concert hall breath, no checking in, no magnifying glass, uh, it's pretty hard for you to ascertain whether you're doing it as efficiently as possible. Um, but yes, the body will tend to want to engage when we start getting faster. We don't want to engage, even though it is faster. <laughs> Okay, and that was passive all the way through. And remember, you're playing softly and you're playing harmonic slurs with no engagement from the body, ideally. How does it compare to the way that you regularly played for years? Once more, step six. <laughs> Good. Generally, I wouldn't worry too much about tongue. I, what do I normally say is the lips change pitch, tongue makes it sound nice. Tongue changes the resonance of the oral cavity. The lips itself, which is the part that's connecting to the horn, uh, changes the changes the pitch. Uh, so, I mean, there is a there is a tongue controlled harmonic harmonic slur that we can do by manipulating the lip by using the tongue to do I don't want to go down that path whatsoever here. Um, but you're working for the pitch change purposes perfectly. It's great. So that's I could use a little tongue and probably get those uh, more accurate, but I'm not concerned. No big deal. No. Nah. So to prevent this from going astronomically long, I do have a question about Maggio. Is this Maggio? Greg mentions Maggio, the Maggio chimp picture, and we've all seen that. Is this essentially a Maggio set? It doesn't really matter one way or the other. I'm still going to do this just for my own curiosity. I'm, I want like to know, is this essentially the Maggio philosophy? My understanding... Uh of Maggio was just getting the middle of the lip out of the way and engaging the aperture corners. And he figured out in getting the lips out of the way that it had a sort of similarity to the look of the chimp. However, I don't use it anymore. And the fact that it was sitting there was just because I moved some stuff. I don't use it because everything that I say is what 
psychological impact does it have on the student? And I'm talking about watching golf videos online as well, right? What psychological impact does it have on the student? I've had a student trying to replicate the chimp and try and play like it. So from that point on, I've gone, I'm not going to use the picture anymore because whilst it can uh, be a nice visualisation on what we're working on, it can be misleading. Uh, so I would prefer to diligently stick with the steps and it just so happens, I mean, we can say moo, moo, ah, ooh. remember what we're working on. It's the sensation, it's the aperture corners, the, hum, the horizontal movement inwards of the corners without the jaw moving, all of these things, really important. So the, yeah, the monkey's neither here nor there. <clears throat> The other, another question is, all right, how am I going to get higher? Uh, maybe the, I haven't gone ahead uh, through the videos. I have watched Moderato, but I don't know, again, the secret of getting up to that level. I do the, the lip buzzing thing every once in a while. But I do have trouble. I need to work on that some more yeah. without going crazy on it. It's weird when I do that, it tickles my ears, right? Yeah, so uh, that's cool that you're doing, although I'm doing it the opposite way. When you put your lips on the vibration stops, it's only when I isolate the aperture corners. So I keep doing that, keep getting used to it, but there's no pinch. Again, it's working from the from the, the sides there. The course has developed going up in semitones and one harmonic at a time for a reason. So if I now, not playing as I've been saying, not gigging, not practicing, not really touching the horn, learning a lot, learning what I need to do to get the message across more strongly, learning what people are doing, Learning how to learn. At the end of the day, I'm teaching how to learn, not how to play trumpet. I'm teaching how to learn how to play trumpet. Give you the skills to self-analyze and then put, I saw somewhere recently someone saying, we are our own best teachers. And that's what I'm trying to get you to do based on information, science, logic, experience. <laughs> it's You are teaching yourself based on the information that I'm giving. Uh, and hopefully I'm just expediting my own uh, process. So that's going up another octave just from shape. And there is no engagement in the body. It's counterintuitive. People go, you've got a support to play up there. No, you don't. You do if you want to go. If you're going to play loudly, the body needs to be involved. There's enough passive energy to get up there softly. Um, so how am I going to get higher eventually? You know, that's, that's the ultimate goal for all of us. Uh, how do I know I'm ready to move on? How can I be 100% sure that I am being true to process all of So I think we've um, answered these questions. Um, ready to move on is awareness and it doesn't matter whether you're doing the process 100% efficiently or not you know what it should feel like and then you move ahead uh, uh, and compare and how do I know whether I'm doing the process correctly closed eyes internalization of what the body is doing the feeling of humming and singing it's on the start of every video for a very good reason. True. That, and for me, um, kicking I don't think is a problem. Uh, I do feel when I get higher that my my uh, abdominals engage, but above the staff, not in this range at all. Um, so eventually I would like to eliminate that, but of course we do need to use the abdominals depending on whatever volume we're playing. Correct. Um, and range. Well, so, again, just to clarify, not range, but volume on any range. Again, I will not use my abdominals.
There's no abdominals. Long notes. Louder notes. Yes. Pitch. Go. I want to stick to process. How do you know 100% um, if you are? I think that's it. I think that's all my questions. I'll list these as well. But thanks for any advice. And uh, hopefully Greg will get a chance to chime in a little bit. And hopefully this will help other people too. And um, have a great day, guys. Thanks. Bill, mate, I, I cannot thank you enough. And I know there are bunches of people out there that have really resonated with your journey. Share your frustrations. I'm always trying to learn how to get this information across more concisely. And it's because of you sharing your experiences and posing these questions that help me get the message across more clearly and why I'm doing the new drills. I'm moving all the exercises out of Largo stage. I don't going to do it yet, but I'm putting new drills to get this information across. The most important part is expectations, the amount of repetition, how important the sensations are. It's really important that we know what we're working on. So then, like I, I did a, a video the other day of doing perfect practice swings with a, a three wood, sweeping the grass. Every time there's a ball there, I'd take a divot. <laughs> Think about that. Perfect swings, great process, rotation, all this brand new swing left-handed. Put a ball there and I take divots. What does the ball make me do? What does the instrument make you do? What does the demand of playing notes make you do? It's really deep, it's really important, and learning process and then adding. That's why I do tissue first then visualize it, then mouthpiece, then lead pipe, then instrument with valves halfway down, just to allow us to check in. Are we maintaining process or are we starting to manipulate as every step goes on? Uh, this, my yak chat here is nowhere near as cool as the first one was, I'm sorry. I had lots of cool information in there and a lot of it I can't come to mind now. Um, but it's from from my golf experience and getting lessons from my PGA Pro. It, come and let me see what you're doing, like Bill has, so I can analyse you properly. Doing a week for free is not going to do anything if you're not prepared to invest. And it's not a hard sell; it's just fact. There's a bunch of information around that's free, but it's all scattered. If you want to women learn something you've got to invest in it invest your mind invest your time i'm going to have in this thing dreamers dabblers um doers and drivers dreamers want everything and don't want to work for it dabblers have a bit of a play around doers do the stuff but don't really do it correctly drivers people that are driven do it because they want it and there is no fail it is going i'm going to get there and I want everyone at Windworks to be drivers. And it takes time and effort to get it happening. And that's what I've done with my golf. And I go out and win a freaking game. I don't know how that happened. But let me tell you, after that, I need to go back and start practicing from scratch. And I think I said in this video, you've got to keep going back to Largo and starting again because there's too much information. And you've got to, it's not too much. There's as much as there needs to be, but you can't learn it all on first listen it's impossible there's too much to just listen to once and get it but when you go back the next time when you go back the next time you become more aware of your internal processes and more aware of your inefficiencies and next time round and next time round and next time round it becomes better and better and we build this foundation a real solid foundation and it doesn't happen in one week it doesn't happen in three months it might happen begin to happen in six months and 12 months I've got a, a young girl that comes here for lessons. She's in grade six, primary school, playing for about nine months. And what she's doing is incredible on the horn because she gets it and she practices. So it doesn't take forever. I've got her playing the Haydn second movement. I've got her playing Goethe trumpet concerto. We're doing a little bit of improvising, but we do the technique work, half an hour lesson a week. And she's already got scholarships into high school because of the way that she's playing. It's awesome what can be done. Uh when we understand what we're working on and implement it correctly and patiently with zero tolerance for any impure process 
unless you've drawn a line through your practice day and going, right, how far can I go? Results driven, but don't panic if Valsalva kicks in. Overwork, pinch, push. Don't worry. You're working on it. Uh, I thank you all for being part of Windworks. And if you're watching on YouTube, come and join the community. As you can see, we've got a, an amazing community. Bill's a high-achieving professional trumpet player and a professor in Texas. And getting people like him to share his story is just extraordinary. And when we get through the other side, there will be easier playing with more satisfying results. At the end of the day, we're not saving lives. We're not saving the world. If I stop playing, you stop playing. The world's not going to stop turning. But we want satisfaction from our playing. That's number one. And you know, a lot of people are overfighting their horns. And it's not hard to fix. The most important thing that I can say to you is this works and you can do it. It works and you can do it. I understand it. I've figured out how to do it, and I'm sorting it out on the golf course as well. I don't know how far I'll go with that. It's more about the learning process and the demonstration of that rather than golf itself, but it's been an amazing process to uh, undertake. Uh, I've learned so much, and hopefully from the beginner psychology, I can pull apart what I need and show you my process of how many repetitions are required and how analysis is, is required so stand by for the new uh, drills that are coming for the Largo stage. Uh, and let's keep the conversation going again, Bill. You mate, it's developing beautifully. Overall, it's developing beautifully. Just keep an eye out for those little things and start stepping it up, most definitely. Uh, I'll stop rattling on. Hopefully this video worked. I'll stop recording now. See what wind works.